If you guys want some motivation today, pay attention to a guy like Steele in the CSGO scene. Banned now over five years ago from CSGO majors. If you guys were unaware of this, I'll link a great podcast most recently coming out to speak yet again about his I Buy Power ban. He's done so with Richard Lewis and Thorne and now with DDK. A great audio podcast, by the way. And again, I'll link it down below for all of you guys on YouTube. Uh, he speaks out uh, for multiple times now ever since his time dealing with his ban. And again, uh, if you guys did not know this, a lot of unknown details still being shared to this day. When it comes time for the first time he actually got banned for the I Buy Power situation, if you guys did not know, it was indefinite. So at the time, many of those players thought indefinite and indefined amount of time it could be up in a year maybe two unfortunately after a year though they find out that indefinite ban is a permanent lifetime ban which we really don't see too often across other esports until most recently with FaZe Jarvis and his aim body and experience but match fixing is certainly in a realm of its own when it comes time for CSGO and Notorious Stories you think about I by Power you think about Swag you think about Steel the two that are actually remaining inside the sport trying to compete at their best and still giving it their all every single day especially when you look at a guy giving it his all you look at a guy like Steel, from Torqued to Ghost to most recently now with Chaos as well. Others, I think GX was also mixed in there ever since his ban. He is continuing to strive, and luckily enough, we actually had, of course, ESL alongside DreamHack give those match fixers and other banned players a chance after a set period of time. The one person to not give in yet has been Valve with their majors. I'm going to give you guys a bit of a background as well. Also, he comes out and talks about ever since his ban, he's tried out other esports. PUBG, Overwatch, Steel tried both those, almost trying to go pro, at least in Overwatch as well. Did you guys ever know that? Maybe something good can happen here. So I got into Overwatch and competing there just before the game was actually released. So I, I started when it was still in closed beta, but still pretty late compared to all the other people that switched from Quake and Team Fortress 2 and everything. So I was playing that, and it kind of was what I wanted to do. I wanted to compete. But it wasn't the same as competing in Counter Strike. Competing in Counter Strike, like it's something that I was doing for since 2008, pretty much. Pretty, um, I don't know what word I want to use. I don't want to say religiously, but I was competing in basically everything I could compete in, which was mainly Cal, Sevo, and then ESEA from 2008. I played in every league. I tried to go to as many local lands as possible. Even if it's like an eight, nine hour drive, I would, I would do that just so that I could compete in those tournaments, pay out of pocket for the hotels. I would fly to California and in Dallas or other small local lands as well. So when I'm playing Overwatch, I'm like, okay, it's competing, but I don't know what the direction Blizzard's going with this game. I don't like the meta. I'm, I'm not like able to get really good practice. Like in Counter-Strike, you need to work on your aim. You go into a death match. You go into an, a pistol death match or a rifle death match, or you load up one of the workshop maps, maps like Aimbox, or you work on your KZ, or you work on, you know, just like one of those maps where you just have the targets pop up in the wall and you have to work on your flicks. But Overwatch doesn't have that. They don't have like a map where you just go in, you practice your Farah rockets or something like that. So I stopped playing Overwatch. I left that scene. I came back to streaming Counter Strike when rank s and fpl was about and because it was a way for me to play counter strike and earn money and also compete and get scratch that itch a little bit more but it wasn't the same as like actually going to land events and competing in tournaments in person and then i was kind of getting bored of it because it's just like you're just playing the same thing online all the time and just the stress of just like putting on a show for the stream and just streaming these unhealthy hours and playing these unhealthy hours of oh when does FPL or Renka start? 11 p.m. and you finish at like 6 a.m.? Cool. Like that's not good for your health either. So when PUBG rolled around, I started playing it. I actually started really enjoying it. And I also really enjoyed streaming during that period of time because nobody wanted to watch me. So it wasn't like you're, you never feel like this pressure or um, something else. Like there's people watching and you have to do something or people come in. And especially Counter-Strike viewers that, that know me or know of my history, like people come in just to like explicitly troll. And that is not healthy either. It's really annoying and it's not something that I felt welcome to. So when I'm playing PUBG and the people that are still like there watching it, it's like those guys are there for me not for seeing me rage or get upset in Counter-Strike or something like that. I mean, we knew this guy's financial troubles. He was already working side jobs even when he was 
a, a CSGO pro, astonishing as it is, you know, that was kind of the main reason as to why these guys fixed in the first place. They weren't making what CSGO pros are making today. It kind of just baffles you all the more. It's been five years. Over five years since these guys have been banned and nothing to be done, but they're still trying to be pro players or maybe around that five-year mark. It's it's astonishing to see. Even further than that as well, he talks about how the fact we're not really sure uh, where these majors do stand. He goes on to clarify, though, he's reached out to Valve to actually talk about coaching. Now, he kind of gave a mixed response here, so we're not fully certain, but he actually goes on to point out that apparently he could be coaching for a team at the major. It's fine as long as he's not play at the major so we could see a future coach steal although then later on he kind of um, kind of touches on the fact maybe he could coach throughout the minor qualifiers and major qualifiers but if he was actually at the major coaching he's not really sure on that point so coach steel could still be a possibility which i would love you know callers they can't be the in-game leader effectively you do have to have somebody that's got that's a seasoned player and has experience and that's like a really interesting uh, you know issue in the scene in that sense and and i feel like that is huge hugely you know valuable um, you know, in, in you being who you are and, and having all of that experience and value as an IGL, I feel like that's so hugely valuable. So that, that, that seems to be like, uh, in some respects, surely like the light at the end of the tunnel that, that, you know, you will still be in demand. I mean, what, what about, you know, you actually working with teams? Is that something that it does valve, like not want you to work with a team that's competing in a major, even if you're not necessarily directly, even a coach? No, I, I reached out to valve about that because a uh, team had actually asked me about the, the situation and asked if I'd be like interested in being a coach, for example. And I reached out to Valve and asked them like what their clarification on all of that was. And they said, they don't care as long as I'm not playing. As far as restrictions go, Valve just doesn't want me playing in the tournament, but I could be a coach. I don't know if I'm uh, allowed to be a coach, but like I, I can't be at the event or something. I'm not sure about that specifics, but they're not going to disqualify a team because I'm their coach. I don't know. It's kind of hitting me hard today. I know I kind of make these videos out of nowhere, but especially given the recent uh, coming out of Joshua Nissan or Steel about this topic, it really makes you think how amazing would it be for Valve to be fully transparent throughout 2020, not only on VSM or Yampy, these underage pros who were caught cheating and actually backed by the system, as well as match fixers and say, hey, from now on, we're going to give each and every case, especially when it comes to pro cases, subjective review or maybe some new guidelines they can actually follow as well. It just sucks, especially when these pros now cheated at a time where CSGO was entirely different. Pros nowadays making so much more than they were five years ago. You know, a lot of them still fixing though, which we've talked about on this channel and that I'm not going to get at the topic because we have still so many pro players who cheat according to a guy like Pasha Biceps, or we still have cases of, of match fixers out there and skin betting being a huge issue in lower tier CSGO, but no! They weren't big enough names, so Valve's not going to pursue them right now. It, it irks me so much, but at the same time, if this were to be a thing, can you guys imagine for a single second players like Swag and Steel being able to compete at majors and make the major run? Valve comes out, the 2020 headline says match fixers unbanned from the I by Power scandal five years later, and they get to make their major runs. Can you imagine the storylines behind that in the world that would be behind both those players, especially a guy like Steel throughout minor quals, minor, major qual, and the major itself, if he could make that run, which evidently I think he eventually would with that kind of motivation behind him. I, I cannot imagine how much the community would come behind a lot. Yes, they still have their haters, but how many people would watch that run? Because it'd be such a spectacle. These guys stay in the scene year after year after year. Lucky enough to be able to compete at some other TOs out there, but the major being the ultimate prize, right? In this same interview, Josh has come out and said he has not accomplished what he set out to come back to comp accomplish. He came back for a reason. He has not accomplished that quite yet, and he's still hungry. The fact this guy is still here years later and many of his former fixing teammates are not god knows what az is azk uh, i barely god knows what days to doing right now swag is still here yes but steel is the one who's up front and forward and actually competing and really really gunning i feel like compared to the likes of everyone else it's crazy to me it blows my mind i just don't like a lot uh, especially recent light as well with these underage vac bands and, and the iba power case i think a lot of us can agree it's I don't like how it's being ran by uh, by uh, or by Valve. It's super sad to see, but it's also super motivating to see a guy who can still be so determined amidst the unlucky nature of being the first top tier pros to be caught match fixing, and yet it's still going on across the entire CS scene. 
More coming soon for all of you guys. Steel has now spoken out again about the iBuy Power ban. Will 2020 be their year? I think a lot of people doubt it, but tons more want it. And we'll see what happens next. Until next time, take care of yourselves. My name is Jake here from Esports Talk, breaking down CSGO esports gaming news every single day, all day long. Until next time, take care.